chess is an equalizer, you know. I mean, chess is something, you know, but really in life, life couldn't really offer, you know, like equality, full equality, despite the disability, but chess, chess offers it, you know. And this is the great thing, actually, about our game, you know. We should be proud to have it, you know. This is, a, this is giving, you know, all sorts of different people equal, equal opportunities. I mean, I mean, I see that uh, as, a, as a huge, huge plus for chess. Welcome to another edition of the Let's Talk About Chess podcast. This year, many online tournaments have been played, but you might have missed the first online FIDE Olympiad for people with disabilities, which was played, played from 20th November till the 3rd of December. The event attracted 61 teams from 45 countries. In this episode, I'm going to talk to the chairman of the FIDE Commission for the Disabled about the Olympiad. But my guest is also a three-time winner of the German Championship, winner of a silver medal uh, with Team Germany in the 2000 uh, Olympiad. And in 2011, he won the first World Games for the Disabled with a perfect score. And we're going to talk about books for chess teachers and chess students. So without further ado, let's talk about chess with Grandmaster Thomas Lütter. Welcome, Thomas. Hey Eric, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, it's my great. pleasure, pleasure to be here. Good to see you. Good to hear you. How is? How are you? How are you doing in these difficult times? This is the first no, of another lockdown here in Germany. Yeah, lockdown in Germany. So okay, hello to everyone in the world. I mean, yeah, lockdown in Germany. The situation. Okay, we don't need to to describe it. Everybody knows it's not good, but okay, we survive. So no, but it's also good to see you, Eric. I mean, we 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 saw many times, but many many times it's like I've, I was think, thinking that's like 20 years ago, you know, at the beginning of the chess computer age. We yeah. remember the times, you know, when 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 we were chess base and the programs played in rapid tournaments and and whatever. Yeah, I mean, this seems like ancient history now, but good to see you. Yes, very good. So my pleasure is mine. I want to talk to you about the the, the FIDE uh, Olympiad, which was uh, just organized a couple of weeks ago, the first FIDE Olympiad for people with disabilities. And you are the chairman of the FIDE Commission for the Disabled. Um, can you tell me something about your role and what is this? Yeah, you're a chairman of this uh, commission. When did you start and what, what is your role in this? Yeah, the story is, okay, I'm heading this apartment in FIDE since 2010. Mm -hmm. So it's now 10 years already. Uh, okay, many of you know it's a personal issue for me since I am having a disability. Uh, it's not like I'm, I'm talking much about it. I just live my life. I, I, I enjoyed playing chess, traveling the world. I have many friends. And well, during my time as a, as a chess player, I always thought that certain things should be done better for disabled people. But I didn't want to touch this issue while I was playing. So after basically coming to an end of my career, there was an opportunity that the uh, old person who was uh, handling the chess for disabled in FIDE was retiring, a gentleman from England. And yeah, I applied for this thing. Uh, this is a pro bono uh, position. Yeah, it's not paid, but I applied for it. I got it. And since then, you know, I'm, I'm working on overlooking uh, uh, chess for the disabled, which means basically at the beginning, it was like rules and regulations. Uh, many of you as chess players, you know that for a long time, disabled players are participating in tournaments. There's a certain set of rules, which we modernized in the last years, maybe some of you noticed certain changes came to the laws of chess and to the appendixes. Um, and yeah, well, there are a couple of, you know, things which just, you know, had to be improved over the time. Obviously, for instance, the in the laws of chess, the appendix for, for blind players is like, I think now 60 years old. 
So it had to be just modernized, you know, not necessarily improved, but, you know, a bit, you know, yeah, come to date, you know, we have a lot of technology was, you know, invented. So all this, you know, we, we just, you know, worked on this. So yeah. you, you overlook it because I saw that there are three federations. There was a federation for the blind and for the, there's the IBCA and for the deaf, the ICCD. And for the yeah. physically disabled, the IPCA, are you watching all yeah. these three uh, federations, or how does that work? No, well, these organizations are independent, and they are also many of them were founded decades and decades ago. For instance, the organization for uh, for players with hearing impairment, I think, was founded in the 1950s or uh, even earlier. So. No, they are independent and they are running their tournaments and all this and they they are affiliated organizations to FIDE. So, I mean, the, the difference is like, you know, the all only national federations can be members of, of the FIDE and each each federation has a vote when it comes to the, to the elections. While affiliated organizations, they are not members, so they don't have voting rights. But you know they have the right to organize tournaments, to get the tournaments rated, to uh, uh, announce them world championships, etc. But they are independent. I mean, my role in FIDE or the, the, the role of the FIDE Commission is more like uh, overseeing, uh, like I told, FIDE stuff. Like for instance, laws of chess is FIDE regulations or organizing, right? What you said now in Olympiad for uh, people with disabilities. So we are just, of course, we are in good corporations with these organizations. Okay. There are world championships. So every federation, so to speak, has its own world champ championship and its own tournaments. Like there is a world champion yeah, yeah. for uh, the ICCD or for the IBCA has its own world champion. Yes, of course, the blind, for instance, the organization for blind players Mm -hmm. They have their own uh, championships. They have a world championship and other events, championships. There are many, many have national uh, national organizations which run national championships. So this is good. So all is good. And the thing is like, what is my idea is like just to, how to say, to work together. Because uh, right now this... Uh, the Olympiad for people with disabilities was part of the uh, Paralympic project. This is how we call it in the commission. Uh, the Paralympic project, as the name applies, is like uh, we should bring chess to the to the to the Paralympic Games. I mean, this is this is really an an important thing. Somehow, we as chess players we missed out whatever, 30, 40 years ago, at the beginning of the Paralympic movement, we were not there. So now we are trying to correct it. I mean, as you understand, it would be, would be magnificent if chess would be part of there because of the, not only the attention and the media, but also the possibility of sponsorship and, and, and governmental funding and all this. It's, I mean, it's clear. So. Now we try to, to make it happen. And this means we have to organize events. We have to work together, bring people together, you know. So let's see if we manage. I mean, this is basically uh, what I and what all the commission members are trying to do. What do you think? Is is chess a winter sport or a summer, summer, summer game? Yeah. Okay, here let me say one thing because there's already success in that area. So the, the organization for, for, for deaf uh, players, deaf is a, a hearing impairment. Mm -hmm. They are part in, at, their, uh, at their international games, the Deaf Olympics. Maybe you have heard of that event, the Deaf Olympics. And chess is part of it. And they are participating in the winter games. Oh, okay. So, okay, somehow they laid the, the direction for it. I mean... As we understand, or as I understand it, I mean, the summer games, and here we speak about all Olympic games, etc., 
are pretty much packed with events, while winter games still have space. So, but let's see, let's see. I mean, this is just the beginning. I mean, obviously we are already happy if we get the place there. I mean, if we just there, you know, it's already <laughs> good. So, but what do you think? I mean, is chess a summer sport or a winter sport? I mean, in case I, we have to make I don't know. a choice. You can, you can play, play chess, of course, all year long, of course, but uh, yes, it is difficult. I don't, I have no idea. I think whatever their space, I think maybe in the winter people tend to stay more indoors but on the other hand we have a lot of summer mm. summer open tournaments so people also play a lot of uh, chess in the in the, in the summer so it is a difficult decision i think if you have to make a choice i wouldn't no i think i would do it where we get the most attention for chess and that could be in the winter games perhaps i don't know because there are so many other yeah, sports yeah, in the yeah. summer i so. mean I mean, I think it's it's just a luxury to talk about it. If yes. we bring chess to this to this game, you know, it's already it would yeah. be it would be a big thing. So yes. this is absolutely. But let, let's talk a bit about the first Olympiads or the online Olympiad now for people mm -hmm. with disabilities. The original plan was to play this year in Hatimasis with together with the FIDE Olympiad. Is that correct? In August? Yes. Yeah. Correct. So okay, we know that. Look, what I always like to say, you know, the first Olympiad was like nearly a hundred years ago. I mean, the first FIDE Olympiad. FIDE founded like you now nearly a hundred years ago. They made their, their tournament, the FIDE Olympiad. And then I think in 1950s, they added the Olympiad for women. Mm -hmm. And in, I think in 2000, they added the Olympiad for juniors under 16. And now we have the next department we have the olympiad for for people with disabilities so this is a nice you know progress in time we see that you know things are getting more how to say more importance we 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 just need it you know we want to make feed uh, or chess bigger and we want to reach more people and basically people with disabilities were of course included in chess all the time but they, they didn't have this big international events. I mean, they were not really, you know, represented in an Olympiad. Because like, look, by statistic, it's like one out of seven people in this world have a disability. You know, this is, this is in a huge number. If you sum it up, it's a billion people. Yes. And, and chess by itself is, is just, you know, the right, uh, the right sport or the right uh, competitive sport because by definition, disabled people cannot be so so much in physical sports. So probably we even have a higher percentage than 15%. I mean, we didn't make statistics in chess, but it is my feeling that it's probably a bit a bit a bit higher. And if we want to popularize chess, I mean, this is a big group we, we can focus on. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this Olympiad will, will help in, in this direction because okay it will suddenly give uh, people an opportunity to to play an olympiad and represent their country and you know in a way you know we just follow the 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 typical paralympic movement which is just ongoing in i mean worldwide so so the plan was uh, we started and yeah and then came 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 Corona, yeah, the, the pandemic. So the, the plan was to have this tournament to, as a start with, with 30 teams. So we invited uh, 30 teams just by, by continents and by rating. So we had a, we had a, uh, well, we invited the strongest by, I mean, just, just a selection by each continent, strongest teams and adding up by 30. So, but then came Corona, the tournament in Hanti Mansis couldn't take place. And of, obviously we had to move it online. And then of course the restriction to 30 teams was, was needless, yes. So we opened it up. And at the end we got 61 teams from 45 countries, which is a, a huge thing, yeah? More, yes. than, more than 400 players. More than 400 players, yes, yes. This is quite an, uh, did, did, are you? Uh... Uh, were you surprised by the number of 
teams and players mm. that were that because um, I, I listened to a, to another podcast just before the uh, Olympia took place and there were I think about 30 teams I think as far as I can remember so there were quite a lot of last more or less last minute uh, applications then is that is that right yeah yeah, yeah. we had okay the, the good thing was we had a lot of time to plan it mm -hmm. you know the the original Olympia was was scheduled for July and August yeah And basically, then FIDE was planning to run the Chess Olympiad online. And this took place in September. And this was exactly the moment when we started to prepare the online Olympiad for people with disabilities. So we had like two, three months time. And yeah, so we were already in contact with federations and with players. And also there was an important thing because uh, in, in May and in June, we did tournaments. So just two tournaments, one in May, one in June, uh, just to, you know, just to start uh, uh, tournaments for, for players with disabilities. The tournament in May was an overall uh, tournament individual And we had, I think, 60 or 70 entries. And then in, in June, it was a junior tournament, just under 20, where we had like 50, 50 entries. So and with these tournaments, we wrote already to federations that we are planning to have these events. And so it was a good, you know, start to, to get, you know, people aware of our our tournaments and our ideas. Mm -hmm. And basically we already had a, a structure in place when we started to, to work on the online Olympiad. So yeah, well, and then the feeder channels were of course very useful writing to federations. So, and many federations just helped us selecting a team. And for some, it wasn't easy because they knew they had players but it was not organized yet. So basically now we also created many, in many uh, federations, I mean, a structure was created or people responsible for, for players with disabilities. So if we make, or when we make the next one, second Olympiad in a year or two, things will be easier. And hopefully there will be more teams playing Just let me let me just add one interesting no two interesting details. Sure. Uh, we allowed the, the 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 countries with more players. We allowed them to register more teams. So if you look at the the, the final standing, you see that some countries have two teams or three teams. This was uh, for the countries who just uh, have more players. Mm -hmm. So this is. This, we thought this is a, is a, was a good idea just to, to, to encourage people to play, since we still think it's a very much a social issue. And the second detail difference to the uh, Olympiad was uh, that in each team, one uh, female player had to play. So just to encourage, you know, not to have it an all male team, but, you know, just to have, have male and female players. Yeah. So one out of four players and four uh, four extra players, I think, was the uh, was allowed, right? In the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so the, yeah, yeah. We we allow. I mean, it's a the team event on four boards, and then we also allowed four reserve players uh, because of. I mean, online and I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, we came up with the idea just to have four players as a yeah. because for an online event, of course, it's. It makes sense, yeah. I yeah. mean, and no, the, the regulation is one woman had to play. I mean, each each round a woman had to play, so okay. they couldn't just if they just have only one in the in the in the lineup, then she had to play all the games. Or, but many teams they had just two or three women registered. So. <laughs> And also, just just to 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 ask about a practical thing about um, when they play, you played a relatively quick twenty five minutes and 10, 10 seconds was the time control. When you have when you have um, uh, players who are uh, blind, for example, 
how does that function? How do, do you have enough time to make to to uh, to play this game? Because they need some assistance, I think. Yes, don't, don't this they, is uh, a good have, topic you mentioned. Because it's yes. also it so, also has to do with, with with cheating, for example. Because if this this blind pe person has a very strong grandmaster as a, as an assistant, well, yes. <laughs> so uh, what happens? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we, we try to be as close to the to the uh, feeder regulations here. And you know that each player with a disability can bring an assistant to make the moves or to push the, the clock. I mean, this is you, probably all of us saw that in many tournaments. Mm -hmm. And for all official feeder events, uh, the organizer uh, provides the assistant. So this is an important thing, you know, I mean, so let's say For instance, a, a blind player would just qualify to the candidates, maybe possible, yeah? Mm -hmm. So sure. then then this player would just receive an assistant mm -hmm. and this assistant will just make the moves on the other board while the blind player is allowed to, to play on his blind chess set. So, and also this uh, assistant would, uh, of course, uh, uh, keeps the score I mean, or I mean, writes the notation and everything. Yeah. So this is by by the regulations. And for all other tournaments, I mean, you know that this is of course the recommended solution. But for many organizers, it's not practical. We we know that. So many times, just the opponent makes the moves for the blind player. I think you you know, and and this is a very this is, actually this is myself, good. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. you, you know, yes, yes, I, I done it also. I mean, played in, in open tournaments with blind players. I've done it, and this is good practice. You know, this is this is social responsibility, and uh, I think this is a was a good solution. But you know, once it comes to to real, uh, how to say, let's say playing, let's say for prize money, playing for national championships, etc. I mean, it's better if the arbiter organizes an, a neutral assistant for obvious reasons yeah i mean and and this is as far as i know this was this is taking place i mean this is uh, this this was already there so so okay so this was just for the start so for the online olympiad we had the system the system of online assistance and now comes the interesting point which is a huge thing The online Olympiad had more than 60 online assistants. So out of the 400 players, about 60 needed online assistants. So how does it work? Um, all players are connected in a Zoom call. I think you know that, yeah? Mm -hmm. This is this is the typical uh, anti-cheating control. So besides logging into a platform, also the players log into a Zoom call. So they are watched by, by arbiters That, so this reduces yeah. uh, cheating quite a lot. And now comes that the, the online assistant is, I mean, let's say a blind player plays on his or her blind chess set mm -hmm. and, and communicates with his or her online assistant. And then the online assistant is putting in the moves into the, into the platform. So... Basically, there's this uh, two-step uh, yeah. way of play, okay. and of course, it was not easy to find find uh, more than 60, 60 assistants. But it's yeah, it worked. At the end, it worked. We had uh, yeah, very very little little problems with this. Okay, that's good to hear. What did, what kind of software does a blind person use them to log in for example is, is 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 the software is it also available for for deaf people or hearing impaired people and for blind people for example how does that work no no sorry eric just know that everything on the computer is doing the assistant ah, okay that's all the assistant okay it's only the assistant like for instance the two of us now are connected on zoom yeah and Let's say, for instance, I have here my chessboard, and then I tell, okay, I play knight to f3. Mm -hmm. 
and you make this move knight to f3 you make on the computer so basically you you are just you know log in as my name oh, okay. you know you log in as as thomas and then you make knight f3 and of course the arbiters knows that i use an assistant and that's you so the arbiter communicates also to the assistant but knows uh, if he he or she needs to communicate to the player okay. themselves so so this is yeah so it was an the idea is of course because we are not there with technology yet and this is an important point and let me just use this for a little bit of you know uh how to say pushing pushing social responsibility we need to to include all this new technology into our our uh, chess uh, platforms uh, that, that that you know that there's easier accessibility so right now a few platforms are better than others while overall the situation is not as good as it could be you know technology just improved incredibly in the last years so what we should do is like you know allowing let's say all players to have access and let me give one example i mean why not having a uh, uh, chess sets for blind being able to uh, connect directly to a computer yeah so you make the move on a you know like for instance you have this uh, this games basically played on a dgt board and you know the moves go directly to the system Yeah. Why not having it on on boards for blind players? You know, I mean, this is not a thing. I mean, it could be there. I understand that this is not a business idea because we have only few people buying it. Yeah, I mean, this is this would be this would be a, a social project, a donation. If someone likes this idea, I mean, I'm thanks for giving me the opportunity. But if there's a person who likes to sponsor such a such a project, this would really do a lot of good to. To blind players or to players with basically who need assistance. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Like a DGT board, as you said, with for blind players. Yes, It's, uh, yeah, sounds exactly. like a very good idea. Yes, yes. exactly. And you know, uh, technology improved so much in the last years. And now, look, for instance, now there's also a chess clock from, I mean, there's a DGT clock which is talking, for instance. Yeah, maybe you have heard the, the new version. You can stick in a headset so a blind player can can listen what's the time on the clock and all this you know this is this is just you know we are moving into the right direction of course there's a lot of help from good people but you know in one moment you know we also have to say what we really need so i, I see that as a as a responsibility of us yeah. or the, yeah. this. um yes i was When I was uh, doing some research for the, for our conversation here, I also looked for some sci scientific articles about um, how chess is important for people with a disability. And there was not very much material. I was a bit surprised. And now it seems that things are going on slowly, like this Olympiad and uh, the, the people with a disability who are playing chess are now take, taken more seriously. Is that correct? Do I see that right? That that is growing right now. Yeah, getting more growing. attention. Let's say you get more attention. Not growing, but you get more attention. Yeah, more more attention. Look, I mean, basically, what I always tell to kids with a disability, I tell, look, there's no limit. And because I I got this lesson when I was a kid, there were people really encouraging me to to play chess and. I mean, I owe a lot to chess. I'm thankful because chess helped me to find my position in life. And obviously a disability always, you know, stops a person from certain things. While other things, you know, there's no uh, limit, you know. So um, what we need is like a system where we give kids opportunities mm -hmm. and one opportunity is of course to participate you know on um, important events and another opportunity is to give education so here we see a huge difference you know when you see now for instance at the olympiad you see that for instance poland who 
their best te- their first team won the Olympiad. They have a great program in place. You know, their best player, a blind player, uh, Marcin Taspier, is a grandmaster. So imagine, you know, having no eyesight, it's still possible to, to be a grandmaster in chess. So this is, this is what people with disability can do. You know, I mean, uh, there's no limit on this. But, you know, as a kid, the kids need education and the kids need opportunity and the kids also need uh, goals in life. You know, like if you play chess, you can become a grandmaster, you can represent your country, you can uh, win the Olympiad, you, you can be world champion, or let's say you can be at the, at the Paralympics. You know, this is, this is the thing we, we, we offer. And of course, this is a process. Let's see where it leads us. You know, we are just, you know, I've, I hope we are just on the, on the start of the road, you know, it's like, let's see. So, but I think, you know, that uh, the countries who had good programs or have good programs already, they are like examples to many other countries. They, they understand that, that, you know, once we have, have tournaments and education and, and all these things in place, you know, it will develop, you know, this is what I'm sure about. Yeah, I was just wonder, wondering a bit why it took quite long before this movement starts started because 2020, the first Olympiad, I was wondering, because I was what I told you before, I was looking at some results from earlier Olympiads, but there were none. <laughs> so I was a bit surprised, yeah, so to hear this. this. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, the question is always, but this is to the, to the previous generation of people, you know, I mean, why chess wasn't, you know, why this tournament wasn't, they were not organized in 1980s or 90s, or why chess is not part of the, of the Paralympic uh, movement, you know, these things, but, you know, we can only try now to, to, to bring it, you know, this is, this is, uh, actually, this was the start of, of my, my uh, uh, work in, in chess, you know, when we, when the organizers of the Chess Olympiad in Dresden, 2008, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you told me you have been to Dresden and yes. all this, and then in one moment after the Olympiad, just a couple of months after the Olympiad, where there was some meeting after it, you know, I mean, just when they said, but when, I mean, just the sport official asked, when will you make your, your Paralympiad? Because for these people, the, the sport people, this was the normal follow-up. And and there was no follow up in chess. No. And and then, yeah, they started. They said, "Okay, we have to make that follow up." You know, out of nowhere. So we uh, tried to, you know, build it. And then, yeah, in, in 2011, we had our first tournament in Dresden, which was the first tournament combining all players with disabilities. So we tried to combine forces with the uh, different organizations because they were always uh, holding their tournaments separately. And, you know, obviously if we are working together, we have the chance to reach bigger goals. You know, this is, uh, so we worked there. So we, we run this tournament in Dresden in 2011. And in 2013 already we had like, I think 60, more than 60 participants. So it, it just developed from there, you know, it, it got, got recognition. Uh, the thing was there, I mean, uh, FIDE allowed uh, to give the title of world champion, what is, what is an, uh, was a, a, a big help, yeah? I mean, it's not just a tournament, but it's like, you know, world championship, FIDE world championship for players with disabilities. And yeah, and, and, and you, then- And you won it, right? The first one? I won- yeah, I won in, in, in 2011. And since then I I was always in the in I was always part of the organizing committee. You know, there's not such a thing like being an organizer and a player together. <laughs> Maybe difficult. you know yeah? it is difficult. difficult and and believe me, uh, it was so many things to organize. So I am grateful that that you know I could focus on that. But you know, personally, you know. I, lo- I love to play chess. So 
uh, returning to playing here or there would be a big joy for me. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. so maybe, maybe in another Olympiad, maybe the second one. But the first yeah. one here, this Olymp online Olympiad with more than 400 people, how, did, how were the re reactions afterwards? Did you get a lot of good positive feedback from the federations or also perhaps some uh, possible sponsors, for example? Yeah, so the, the Olympiad was sponsored by, by some corpor corporations. I mean, thanks for, 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 I mean, it was Gazprom who sponsored the Olympiad. You can see on the website. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go to the FIDE website and then do the commissions, the FIDE commission for the disabled has a website and there's a lot of information about it. So, yes, so I, will, I will put a link in the show notes so people who are listening to the podcast can just yeah. uh, go to the, to the website. Yes. And yeah, thanks. And yeah, well, the feedback is, was good because uh, obviously there was, there's a lot of uh, interest and demand and we see it was worldwide. It was just, you know, on all the continents. I mean, we had good participation, you know, so it's not uh, uh, focused on just one continent. It's like, you know, it was really a nice, you know, overall, you know, uh, a tournament, you know, from all the continents, so many countries took place. So this is, no, recognition was, was great. And, and thanks for FIDE, FIDE leadership for helping this and making it, making it great. So this is, it's not easy, you know, the idea of, of, of making chess bigger and better, you know, it's not so easy. It has so many details, you know, I mean, Obviously, there's, of course, the top chess, you know, the world championship and all these top guys. And this is good to have it in the big media and all this. And then it's, of course, good to have tournaments for kids, you know, worldwide and huge numbers of kids and continental championships, etc. But like I told, you know, disabled people are, are a huge group and including this group for chess will, will, will help a lot and bring a lot to to. To, to chess and, and so I see this is, I mean, I, I only see positive feedback on this. That's good, that's good to hear. And let's go back to the tournament. You, the, Poland won, Poland won. Was it a bit surprising that Poland won before Russia yeah. and the Ukraine? Yeah, well, yeah, after all, look, after all, it's still the, the traditional chess countries who are successful in, 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 in all the events, yeah? So, it's like, uh, yeah, well, okay, like I mentioned already, Poland has an has a, has a incredible program for people with disability. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is huge and huge. And they were in the number one seat, by the way. So, so um, yeah, well, however, Russia also had an incredible strong team. So in the final, you know, where we had just, you know, uh, uh, two legs of, of play, you know, just the first round, you know, Russia won two and a half, one and a half, and then the, on the second day, Poland won three one. So, you know, it was a tough match. And as you see it by the result, it could have been another way. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, tough. But we see also, you know, other others like, I mean, we had this this Swiss uh, tournament and the first four went to semi-final and final. But if you look at the final standing, some teams were really close to qualify, you know, and for instance, there were the Filipino team, Philippines have a great program. I mean, they, they missed the qualification just, yeah, I don't know, it was whatever, very little and, and other teams, you know, so, so there's, you know, there's, I mean, to answer the question, yeah, well, yeah, well, let's see. I mean, it's good, you know. Okay, good. good. Good, good tournament, good and exciting tournament. I was just wondering when I, uh, how about these teams? Yeah, you have four players and uh, four uh, reserve players. Mm. Um, how, how is there is there kind of a qualification um, procedure? Because it could be that the let's say the IBCA has some very good players, but the ICCD, the uh, the mm. committee of the Dev says we also have good players. We want to have more players in our in their team. How does that? Yeah. How does that work? No, I mean this is okay. We are, look because you have to work together, as you said. Yeah, you have three yeah. kind of federations, but you have to make one mm. team in the end yeah. for the Olympiad. Okay. okay, let's see. I mean, look, we are in FIDE. We are working via 
the national chess federations. So, and uh, the team is also, I mean, registered by the by the national chess federation. So, let's say you receive the, I mean, your your national federation receives the invitation uh, for the team, mm -hmm. and then it's up to the national federation, mm -hmm. and they are fully responsible. So we are not uh, intervening there. You know, it's it's theirs. So I mean, but this is this is by the FIDE charter. You know, and I also think it's fair, you know, I mean, also the federations, they name a captain and, uh, and an official. So, so basically the communication for the, for the event goes, goes via captain and, and, and a, a federation repres representative. So this is all by FIDE protocol. So what I think it's also important because we want to have the Olympiad for people with disabilities as as close and 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 close as similar as the Olympiad. So and you see that many of the regulations are just the same. And this is the way we want it. You know, we, we don't want to create special special rules or or things things for people. I mean, when it's needed because of a disability, yes. But in case of registration. No, it's the same, yeah. Yeah, well, I was just wondering how, how they make these teams, yeah. So from from yeah, different yeah. Uh, because yeah, also yeah. because also national federations may have different federations again for different uh, disabilities. So that's sometimes yeah, difficult but... to communicate. <laughs> I think there is quite difficult to communicate and to, to 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 make these teams. I think there's a lot of organizational uh, yeah, talents yeah. needed, I think, before to to to, yeah, to yeah. get this but, Olympiad going. But, but Eric, being in chess for a long time, we know that making a national team mm -hmm. just for the Olympiad <laughs> is in many countries also not an easy thing. That's right. <laughs> yes. so, so this is, and then, you know, it's good to stay out of it from the side. You know, this is, yeah. this is a national thing. Okay. And, and we know because, you know, in the Olympiad, some people, this is always the stories, you know, the team should be this or that or that, you know, but this is definitely 100% to the National Federation. So, okay. Good. yeah, but it worked, you know, I think it worked because, you know, after all, when we look, look at the numbers and the statistics, I think uh, from all groups or different disabilities, people were represented. So there was no... Because I think it's just a matter of statistics. You know, once you get big number like 400 players participating, it is in a way, you know, coming to the to the to the typical normal uh, statistics. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, just one more question about this Olympia: the tempo, 25 plus 10, was it okay, or was it some? Was it too yeah. fast, perhaps, for sometimes for, for some for yeah. people to to to, uh, to execute the moves? Yeah, interesting to say. I mean, this is a good question. Good question. So we are receiving a lot of comments. So there's always for online chess, there's, you know, we followed the time controls of other events. And there's one thing about, about online chess we were made aware of is like, you know, obviously there's, we have this uh, cheating problem in online chess which I don't want to go to a detail. Yeah. But as I understood, or I, as I was told, as longer the game, as more likely or more difficult it's, it is to detect cheating. Mm -hmm. So we just cannot have games which last two hours, three hours, you know, because in that moment, uh, cheating is not any more detectable. Mm -hmm. So we needed a time where we could, you know, ask the players to stay at the Zoom call because, you know, there's no, as you know, people have to stay at the, at the Zoom call while they play. So the game per se cannot be too long, you know. So it's a, it's a sort of a dilemma, you know. I mean, I understand that, that uh, 25 minutes plus 10 seconds per move is just a quick game. On the other side, you know, it was a compromise. I, I personally think it's not too little. It's just not a, it's not a two hour game. You know, you cannot sit and think about the moves too long. It's just, you have to move in the yeah. moment. So it's about an hour game in total. That's okay. Yeah. 
if, yeah, this is this is what we we thought, you know. We, we we this was somehow what we thought in our game, and we asked the players to stay this one hour in the Zoom call and play the game. And we only had one game per day, so people are not getting tired mm -hmm. or because of different time zones. They are whatever. We didn't want. We wanted to make it as easy as possible, but of course we are happy for any kind of you know feedback on this. Definitely, you know, I mean, this is, since it was the first tournament, you know, it's, we try to make an educated guess. Yeah, so if any of the listeners has some comments to you, they can contact you, yeah. of course, or you can contact me and then I will mm -hmm. hand it to you. But uh, it's very good to hear that it was very successful with 400 players. It's one of the biggest events of the year, I think, sports events for the... Yeah, I think so. I'm not aware of another sports event for this with such a participation. I mean, of course, you know, they planned the, the Paralympic Games this year, but of course it was postponed to the next year and many other events didn't take place. So maybe, yeah, maybe this this event was the biggest sport event for players or sportsmen of disability. It could mm -hmm. easily be the case. So so this is a this is a good thing for chess, you know. I mean we set some we set some records here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's very good to hear. Let's go go on a bit about a bit about your personal life, but if we move away from the Olympiad, you're, you didn't play chess during the Olympiad yourself. Uh, did you want to play or wasn't it possible? Yeah, I think no, there were so, my, so many things in the organization yeah, and there sure. were also so many personal contacts. I mean, just, you know, I mean, people wanted to know, they asked basically the same questions you ask and, and many others, you know, and so, no, there was absolutely no time to play. I, I wish in some time to play and, but then only if I'm not directly uh, involved in the organization. I mean, this is, uh, but this, this, this comes as a saying, you know, I mean, uh, just, you know, hopefully once the pandemic is over, I will also play, you know, a tournament in a year. I, I miss that, of course. Sure. Yes, because you're a, really a chess player. You started playing when you're quite young, it's four, at the age of four, I, I, I found. That was in the early 70s in, in Eastern Germany, right? How was yes. it How was it like to grow up there and to, to get chess lessons in, in, in Eastern Germany, in the German uh, Democratic Republic? Yes, this is like, I mean, for the younger, uh, for the, for the younger uh, audience, yeah, this is a country, I mean, East Germany doesn't exist anymore since 30 years, yeah? 31 years. Yeah, that's, so, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> now that amazing. you mention it, more than 30 years, yes. <laughs> that means, Eric, this means that we are just old, you know. I mean, <laughs> <That's correct. laughs> like old people, you know, telling, you know. So, okay, the young guys, they don't know it anymore. There was, uh, there was East and West Germany as a result of the World War II. And yeah, well, I mean, East Germany belonged to the Eastern European bloc. So it was different. I mean, Life was different. I mean, hard to say. It's it's far away. Uh, there were whatever was there. I mean, it's politics and it's gone. But you know, chess was was played. You know, I mean, chess was well regarded. There were options to play chess, and yeah, like I told, it was a a lucky case for me to find chess. You know, I mean, obviously back then in 1970s. Uh, having a disability was not quite the same as today. I mean, it is not good to have it these days. Don't get me wrong, but you know, uh, as earlier, you know, things were more difficult, you know, this is so, but you know, chess was there. People helped me, you know, they encouraged me to play. I got, I got a bit of coaching training, you know, I mean, I was helped. It was like this. And then, yeah, in 89, you know, there was a German unification and then, okay, this is, this is, this was another time. Yeah, yeah. It was a big, a big jump, but was it, okay, 
was it difficult for you to to enter a chess club then for at the, at the time because how old were you when you entered the chess club about eight or nine 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 years yeah old? seven seven years yeah. old yeah but there was but when you come in with to a chess club as a young kid it's it's already difficult but when you have a disability is it not even more difficult and how did yeah. you how, how was it yeah, how, did, yeah. how did your parents support you for example yeah so of course it was like yeah i mean like i told you know i mean i learned chess for my dad he 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 likes to play chess and i had the chess chess board at home and as a kid in one moment i saw the chess board i i was curious and played and yeah learned it and then going to school i was just at a regular normal school and there was a there was a chess uh, chess club which i joined and there were basically older kids but you know i managed to be the best of this chess club leagues you know I, i i knew to play and whatever and then the coach there was was impressed and took me to a local chess club and yeah i mean and there were also people who helped me basically so this is this was good you know there was yeah well there were lots of people in my life who just helped me because obviously i mean chess clubs in that time they were basically for adults and kids it was seldom to have kids in these clubs and well the disability i wouldn't say the disability was played a role i mean in general they had they didn't have kids in the clubs i mean this is so was, but it was yeah it was difficult enough to as yeah. a kid already to be in the club but you were so, pretty strong already because you won kind of a lot of championships in your in your age group already in the, yeah yeah in eastern germany yeah yeah one yeah in my okay they had eastern germany that they had this this kids tournaments in the in the age groups so i mean they had each town had a had a tournament and then the winner winner or winners qualified to to the regional tournament and then to the to the state tournament so this is what i managed and yeah i think i won i won my age group a couple of times you know i mean so so in a way you know i always thought like chess is chess is an equalizer you know i mean chess is something you know but really in life life couldn't really offer you know like equality full equality despite the disability but chess chess offers it you know and this is the great thing actually about our game you know we should be proud to have it you know this is a this is giving you know all sort of different people equal equal opportunities i mean i mean i see that uh, as a, as a huge huge plus for chess yeah you're the best example i think because yeah because you played of course while you play also play you won three german championships you won an olympic medal in uh, what yeah. what what was your biggest success for yourself being a yeah. uh, being a german champion or the 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 medal in the during the olympiad yeah hard to say yeah okay winning the german championship three times is a is actually a great success i mean i'm still very proud of it winning you know winning it <laughs> yeah because you know all these tournaments i remember winning like in 2002 i think it is connected with a also a huge rating performance you know you see the you see the field there it was actually very very strong you know i mean you look at that it's surprised you know but also then you know play, playing for german team like 10 years we once won sil- the silver medal in in the olympiad in 2000 amazing but there were other things you know i i remember once i quali- i mean i qualified for the world cup two times yeah. where i just you know okay i was eliminated two times in the second round just survived the first the yeah, first but you, round but you won against the uh, portish as far as i could remember portish, uh, i mean yeah this is um no i remember playing the european championship uh which was a qualif- qualifier for the world cup and i made a marvelous marvelous uh, performance to qualify i mean yeah so so there are tournaments which are, which are not like standing out by like whatever winning it but you know just by by performance you know i mean back then 
I think it's 20 years ago, making a whatever 27 something performance was was pretty, pretty decent. So, yes. <laughs> so and yeah, other others, yeah, I mean, I don't know, there are many things, you know, I remember from uh, winning silver medal at the Olympia, we played the, the world team championship where we came fourth was also a good result. We, we, we missed, I mean, we missed bronze medal just by a, by a margin, you know, I mean, we could have been third, so, in, but okay, it wasn't the case. So, but there was many of these things. I also remember, remember a good result in Tilburg because I, thanks to, to you guys from, from the Netherlands, you always helped and invited me. I was, I was, I was always happy to, to visit the Netherlands because I was, was welcome, you know, I mean, I felt always welcome. Yes. So I played the bike and say, uh, and I was invited once to the knockout tournament in Tilburg, where I just made it to the third round. What was also pretty, pretty nice. So, I mean, yeah. So there, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I give it to the audience. You know, I think I was the first player with a disability who came under the, I mean, was among top hundred players in the world. So I, I'm not sure if there's somebody else, but if there's somebody else, then they didn't talk about the dis disability. I mean, I don't know, but okay, yeah. But you came, you, uh, you came a long way, yeah, from yeah. It was. <laughs> as, as, this is a long way yeah, because I, I also read something about a bit of a key key moment in which we were quite young and you already had some won some championships, and one of it, one of the teachers or coaches said. You're never going to make it because you have a disability. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That, that was said. Yeah. And um, did it encourage you or did you think, well, he may be right? Or was it just the other way and motivated you to say, yeah, now I'm yeah. going to show it that I'm really good? I think, yeah, this is the thing. I, I got this kind of comments actually sometime in my life. So mm -hmm. this is, I think this is always a part of it. You know, I mean, uh, you, you should have, you know, how to say, a bit of self-confidence. I mean, don't react to all these comments. I, I always try to try to take, you know, energy from it. You know, I mean, this is people are unhappy, so they comment in this or that way. You know, okay, well, up to them. Yeah, I mean, you cannot, you you cannot, you know, force the whole world to love you. I mean, this is this is just, you know, for all of us the same. You know, so yeah, well, I mean. There's this thing that, uh, I mean, let's say playing chess on the top level requires not only huge talent and the ability to work and to memorize and whatever uh, competitive abilities, but it also needs a good uh, good health. You know, this is this is one thing, and I think we all know some players that they are they are just you know marvelous, but they they suffer from some you know whatever health condition. And this is, yeah, this is, this can hold someone back, definitely, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, you know, neglect, neglect this. But on the other way, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, well, not being, you know, world champion doesn't mean you, a player cannot have a decent career, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, maybe, maybe whatever, the, without a disability, uh, this would be this and that. However, you know, we all have something in our in our uh, in our uh, baggage, and, yeah, to which is holding us back personally. You know, and I think this is not not necessarily a disability. It could be this or that or that. So I mean, yeah, well, yeah. So my advice to all, you know, all kids, let's say, with with a disability, don't. Always believe you can make it, you know, you can make it, it's possible, you know, there's a lot of encouragement. Uh, yeah, let me, let me just, you know, just once, you know, make the point because we all saw the Queen's Gambit on Netflix. It's yes, just, really? it's I just think everybody, story. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the story is like the same, it's encouraging. Why to, you know, why to say to the, to the girl in the orphanage, or you don't have the chance, don't do that, you know, why not, you know, I mean, maybe there's the chance, you know, this is, this is the way to approach chess, 
and actually to approach all situations in life. Try it, make it, you know, if you really, you know, focus on it, you can make it, you know, and well, well, of course, in the movie, you know, it showed the path to on chess. Well, you know, it can also, the, can also lead away, whatever, to another career, you know, maybe chess helps to, to come to a great, you know, academic career, because mm -hmm. chess trains, trains certain life skills, maybe the kids learn to organize things in a certain way. They learn planning, they learn directing, they learn, they learn a lot of things, you know. So, so whatever, you know, if you just uh, work on, on things you like, uh, you might excel, you know. Don't, don't let you, I mean, being hold back, you know, because yeah. of some comment. Sure, just, just do it, yeah. And learn, mm. just go ahead and learn chess, which brings me very good to, to another thing you're doing because you're writing a lot of books lately in the last like, 10 years I think you started writing quite a yeah. lot of books one of and some of them are also uh, translated into English and you also made DVDs for chess space uh, opening seat DVDs uh, mm. they were mostly in German right and not in not in English yeah the DVDs are this is an this were older projects I mean in that time you know when DVDs were produced they were basically uh <laughs> about openings, some opening repertoire. No, they were good. I was still an active player. So this was basically my personal repertoire and my uh, advice on the opening. So now these DVDs are, most of them are like 15 years old, 10 years old. Uh, some, so you'll find about this, this, this age. So, and just after finishing my career, I always had this idea to write a book. And now comes the thing, write a book and then having no idea how to write a book. You know, I prepared lots of lots of things and material over the years. You know, I mean, I had things ready, files, whatever, you know, lots of stuff. And now how to make a book out of it. Yes. And <laughs> then, okay, a friend helped me to organize it, you know, to, to bring a certain structure. Uh, but after we, or after the book was published, it was like, you know, I mean, the English title is, is Luther's, Luther's Chess Reformation. I mean, the editor, uh, Quality Chess, they, they probably thought it's a funny uh, word game with my family name, yeah? Yes, Luther <laughs> and Reformation, yes, sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, okay, but there were lots of other stuff was, was, was there, you know, so, I mean, so that's why, you know, trading materials were, were published in the last years. You're quite experienced now because you wrote some more books, which are quite interesting and also translated into English is, for example, a Chess Coaching for Kids, the Under 10 project. Can you tell me something about that? Mm -hmm. Because you analyze uh, games or with your team about from players, from very young players. Yes. What was the reason for that? And what yeah. is it? Well, for this book, yeah, the Under, the under 10 project, is them the editor. So, I mean, there are several people wrote the chapters. So I wrote some chapters, but other people wrote chapters and okay, you mark it. And there's this, there's this um, chapter about statistics, uh, which is interesting. And it's just telling, you know, uh, what a kid should, you know, what should happen in, in games of kids, you know, in case they are training for a certain result. Uh, let me say like, I mean, the statistic goes by blunders. Let's say you have a, a, a game, a typical game, and let's say on top class, one of these blunders decides the game. Yeah, I mean, you make, or a player makes one of these blunders, the game is lost, whatever happens. And then uh, how many of these blunders happen in actually this, this game of this kid's age 10? Mm -hmm. And then it turns out that in some of these games, you know, like six, seven of these blunders happen. So the game, you know, turns, then it turns again, it turns again, it turns again. And then in one moment, you know, I mean, the idea was to show that there's a, some things should not happen in a certain age. Of, of course, if the, the kid is like eight years old, I mean, maybe such a blunder can happen in each game. Maybe if the kid is 10, I mean, such a blunder should happen only like whatever in each third game 
or whatever. Yeah. So this is this is the idea about it. So you you get or the trainer gets some kind of evaluation system because if if this kind of blunders happen too often, you know, the trainer should work on whatever more discipline or on calculation or you know something like this. And yeah, well, basically it's setting, you know, the the difference in training between tactics and, and strategy. Now the idea is like, you know, if you see that this kind of, of mistakes happen too often, or if the coach sees, the coach should understand that the kid needs to train more calculation. Because, you know, all strategy training doesn't help if the kid blunders a piece, yeah? Mm. I mean, and we know this as players all the time, you know, we, <laughs> we spend you know, ages, you know, building up this nice strategy and then comes a blunder and everything is lost. Yes. That's I think every chess player every chess player has experienced that I think yes so, so yes. we know that yeah. so I just wanted to to give you know the hint so how much uh, calculation training one should do and this is my personal thing you know if you think this kind of mistakes happen too often in in the games do more calculation training and uh, you see then in the statistics you see that until a certain level, basically all games will be, or mostly all games will, are decided by a tactics. Mm -hmm. So, so this is, uh, this is the, I mean, this, this was the idea of that chapter. I think it was unique. And, and my friend, he spent a lot of time going through all these games, you know. <laughs> yeah. People should pick it up. Perhaps uh, just coaching for kids, the under 10 project. And so mother, um, Nice books. I think they were translated this year from Thinkers Publishing. It's the first steps in tactics and from tactics to strategy. There are two books, two volumes yes. translated this year. Uh, also very, very good. And a new project this year, I think. Uh, it's still in German. It's, it's the handbook for oh. chess trainers. Uh, it's going to be three volumes. Uh, number one was yeah. published this summer and number two is going to be published next uh, next month, I think. And this is specifically for chess trainers, right? And I saw in the preface of the first book, or your, your foreword you said, there are so many books about openings, but not books for chess trainers. Can you tell yeah. me something about it? Yeah, this is it, yeah. So yeah, this was basically, uh, this these projects, they, they were parallel to each other. So the, the idea of this uh, trainers, book was because I mean the idea is like look we have like you said I mean there's this all these things about openings you know openings openings because openings are coming in every game basically you know you start your game you have your opening so that's it yeah but in fact in fact chess is, is a very rich game you know and and now the how to say you know my generation you know when I Uh, grew up, there was a lot of importance to openings. And then it became even more important when computers entered chess. Uh, but now you see the new generation and uh, just to start with the world champion with, with Magnus, just he, he is able to play, you know, some kind of middle game, you know, he, he doesn't focus on, on this uh, great opening preparation. This is very, very seldom in his games. So But, you know, basically we have this new approach to chess that you, people should be fit, they should be competitive, they should understand middle games, but they also should find resources and endings. They should be, you know, even, you know, playing a game for four or five hours, be fit, uh, yeah, and, and re really see all the resources. So this is basically what was missed in in all the books, I mean, or, or just, you know, we have very few books about this. Yeah. So I try to, I try to, to, to catch this in a way. Let's see, let's see how, how people will take it. Um, because it's not an easy, not an easy topic to, to find, you know, what to train or how to train things. And yeah, let's see, let's see. I mean, 
But this is a nice handbook because you do not only give uh, lessons and some exercises, but you give also some some background of the games, like just psychology, tell them something about the history of the game. And uh, this, is, mm. this is really nice. And I also liked when I looked in the in the second volume in the uh, mm. in the capitals, there are capitals about uh, are chess and coffee and chess and <laughs> sugar and chess and chocolate, for example. Why, why is that? Yeah. Yeah, this is okay. I got a friend of mine who is a, a neurolog neurologist, uh, uh, yeah, physician, yeah, and uh, his uh, specialty is neurology. And uh, yeah, well, I mean, also he's a big chess fan and a, and a decent club player. Mm -hmm. And so he gave a lot of advice. And then I told him, right. Don't you write a, a chapter in this book? I mean, all your knowledge is so good to hear, and we miss such things. You know, if you go back to chess psychology, all these books, there are very few books, and sometimes they're old. And you know, they I, I told him just, you know, write something. And because also, I mean, the chapter is under his name, so it's his it's his opinion i also told you just write your opinion you know just don't ask me about this and you know he he could give a lot of advice on how to handle you know certain certain competitive situations how to to relax how to concentrate how to yeah how to calm down and you know all this you know good advice you know and uh also the guy obviously Due to his profession, he he knew about doping. He likes to talk about this. And then I said, "Look, write write this chapter. This is this is interesting. We should have more of such things, you know. I mean, if we really wanna have chess accepted as a sport, we should be more open to this. And I mean, how to start a game and and focus right, you know, on the start. How not to, you know." be too nervous at the start, you know, how to, whatever. And there are all this, this kind of, you know, uh, things which are just interesting. So yeah, at the end, you know, I'm, I'm actually very happy about this article, but I know him personally, I know him well. So I need to need, I'm, I'm, I'm curious for the feedback from, from people who don't know him. I, let's, let's see. So, but I like the idea a lot, you know. I, I would have given him even more space in the book, but somehow he didn't like it. He was happy for this one chapter. Yeah, let's wait for the feedback so, on the on the let's wait for the feedback on the chapter chess and chocolate. <laughs> so I'm very curious about it. Yeah, this it's yeah, yeah. interesting no, no, stuff. But a good quote if you if you go to a tournament, I mean like in pre-pandemic times, not now in online yeah, chess, yeah. you know, but you know, if this, or hopefully it will come back, then, you know, bring something to eat to, to the game, bring some water, but what to drink, what to eat? Should you drink too much coffee? When you should drink it? Should you have water? Should you eat chocolate? Or should you not eat chocolate? Should you whatever do this or that? And Whatever. This is this is this are good advice, and I think a coach should know that. You know, a coach should help a player. You know, to to tell. You know, uh, well, maybe after an hour or two, better you drink a glass of water. You know, mm -hmm. and because and this is for all of us. You know, we play chess. We are got. We are we are just you know thinking about the position. We just totally in the game, yeah. And then you know sometimes we tend to forget about it. So it's good to have a have a coach, you know, just, you know, telling a routine about this, you know, I mean, and this is, this is not only chess, this is everywhere, you know, I mean, we all know that it's important to stay hydrated, yeah, you yeah, know, sure. but yeah. not to, you know, so. Yeah, but it is nice that it is in the book for chess trainers, it is not only focused on exercises and chess only, but also, as I said, as you said about uh, the things, psychology, what to drink, what to eat and what to do and how to concentrate, for example. But it's also what I found really helpful, I think, for trainers and how to start, how to plan a 45 minute session, for example, with kids, 
with one kid, with two kids, or for more kids, where do I stand yeah, in front of a, a class, for example? So some very useful yeah. tips in the in the book. Do you know is it's going to be uh, translated? Do you have any ideas or or, or not? Because it's, at the yeah. moment it's only yeah, yeah, in German course. right now. Yeah, this one is only in German. Okay, it it should should have been like a couple of months on the market already, but the, the pandemic came and everything yeah, sure. was delayed. Difficult. You know, so and right now the idea to translate it is there is there, and yeah, let's see. You know, I mean, the pandemic makes everything difficult or not not maybe not difficult but different. Let me put it like this. Yes, different. Yes. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, I hope, you know, we will, we will make it. So let's see what the editors are thinking about it. And yeah, or maybe another publisher is interested for, for translation rights. No idea, you know, yeah. I mean, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, but it's quite a, a good subject, which is not handled very well in the chess press. I don't need another opening book, but this is far more interesting, I think, for more, far more helpful, not only for chess coaches, but also for people who are interested in psychology, as you said, neur neurology and some other things. Very good. Um, well, next month, part two will be published and there will be another one, number three, next summer. Yeah, yeah no, the, the, I mean, the, basically it's, it's part one and part two, part two mm -hmm. the trainer handbook. And then part three is, is just a, a collection of, of samples F and materials. Exercises. Okay. For, for exercises, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So I think part three will be published soon after, after part two. But, you know, the, I don't know, the editing for part two took some time. It's, it's not easy to, to make, you know, always chess books as a teamwork. You know, you need good layout diagrams. It's not easy. I mean, you know, it's whatever you write about chess, if you the column, you have to take care. Diagrams are, are, are well done in the layout, you know, all these things. It's it's just, you know, not an easy, not an, besides all the technology we have. Yeah. <laughs> so there is some things to do for you, for you in next year in 2021. Do you have some other plans, which you haven't told yeah. us yet? Yeah, the other plans, obviously now everything was delayed, you know, I mean, from the tournaments this year, they were postponed to, to 2021. So the biggest thing is to have our Olympiad for people with disabilities well, right now. And maybe some of the audience, maybe you, you saw it in the feeder news. It was sometime it was, was there that feeders or we are still planning to, to have the Olympiad for people with disabilities uh, next year in 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 Huntiman Sisk. Mm -hmm. And let's see if this works out. You know, it's a big thing, you know. Let's see. <laughs> so this is we, we can only guess, you know. I mean, this pandemic, you know, who knows, you know, it could be, could not be, you know. I hope very much that it we will go back to the normal and, and have this tournament. Yeah, and this would be definitely the big thing, you know. I mean do you, do you notice after this Queen's Gambit and in the Corona that there is some more interest in your books, for example, and that some more people want to learn chess? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think chess is on the rise, you know. I mean, when you see it on, on different angles, you know. I mean, you see that chess is in, in many movies. I mean, of course, the Queen's Gambit we mentioned, but, you know, the in many movies, actually, chess scenes are there, you know. I mean... There was a time when, when there was, you know, chess, I mean, websites collected scenes of, of, of uh, chess scenes and movies. But now there's so many, you know, I mean, it's difficult to follow track. You, you watch a movie or a show and in one moment, you know, the, the characters just play chess or there's a chess board in the background. You know, you know, chess became, became fashionable again. So this is cool, yeah? So, yeah, I mean... Let's see. Let's see how 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 it will continue. I mean, I mean, definitely chess is doing well. I mean, in difficult times, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. So I think that's a beautiful ending to our conversation. I think. I thank you very much for your time. 
and for all these interesting, okay. all these interesting, uh, yeah, topics we talked about, and all the insight you gave us, and uh, it's, I think it's very fascinating, and I hope that our listeners also are fascinated by by your story personally and what you're doing for chess in general. Oh, thank you for having me, Eric. This is my my, my pleasure to be in your show. Okay, okay, thank you very much. I would say all the best for next year, 2021. And I hope to see you soon, soon, somewhere on the chessboard, perhaps. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this long episode with Grandmaster Thomas Luther, the chairman of the FIDE Commission for the Disabled. I have to say that I learned a lot from Thomas when he talked about different aspects of playing chess for people with a disability, and I hope that this was an inspiring podcast for you as well. As always, I will put up some links in the show notes to the FIDE Commission and the Olympiad, but also to the publishers of the books Thinkers Publishing and Euro Chess in Dresden, which I have to thank for sending me review copies. Go to their websites to find out more about the books and read some previews. If you have any comments about the podcast or have ideas, send me an email talkingchess at gmail.com or send a tweet at Chess Classic. Please do also subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform and tell your friends about it. They might be interested to listen to these stories from chess personalities. My name is Erik van der Reem and I will be back talking about chess with another interesting chess celebrity soon. Stay healthy and stay safe. Bye bye.